Okay. Let's go for another dream. Now, we may need to adjust our, our groups. Um, but one of the things we're going to try to do is, is we're going we're gonna, to, again, we're going to do our best to, to kind of press through this one a little bit quickly. So if possible, and people want to stay, we'll do one more. Or we'll see how much time we take with it. Okay. So here's our dreamer. Let me grab this real quick. There we go. Okay. I so dreamed come I was just a little bit closer. This way? Yeah, there okay. you go. I dreamed I was standing on the beach and I was looking at the sky, which is blue, you know, real nice sky, and I look there was something black coming from the sky, going all the way down into the ocean and in the and going through the ocean up to the, where the beach was. And as I was looking, I noticed that it turned into a whale tail, like a big, huge whale tail. And it, the whale was lifting his tail up, and I knew he was going to make a splash. So I turned around and took off running up the, uh, the beach. And as I was running, I looked to the right, and I seen this little boy who was laying, he was dead. He was laying on the ground. I knew he was dead. So I took off running through a uh, fence. And I turned around to see what was going on, and the little boy was alive, and he's walking around. I was calling him to me, and then I woke up. All right, so let me see if I can. So in this dream, you're, you're looking at the water, mm -hmm. and you see this black thing coming out of the sky, down right into the water, and almost up to the beach. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, you realize this is the tail of a huge whale, and it's about ready to create a big splash. Yes. And so you start running, because... The splash right. is going to be huge. Yes. So as you're running, you see this little boy who's dead laying there. Uh -huh. So you keep on running. And then you decide to turn back just to see what's going on. And as you turn back to see this little boy that was dead, he's up and he's playing around and you're calling him to you. He was up just kind of like in a daze and I was calling him to me. Okay. So, yeah. So he was, he was up and he was just kind of like, what's mm -hmm. going on? And so you start calling him to you to keep him safe. Uh -huh. Okay. Very good. Now, that's a great dream. This is going to be fun. All right, so try to press yourself. Don't take as long as you've been taking in some of the other dream labs. Let, let's try to, let, let's see how quickly you can do this. Start with this. Ask Holy Spirit to give you a sense of the meaning of the dream. And just write down one or two thoughts, and then figure out your title, your focus, your sub-focuses, your details. And once you've got an interpretation of the dream, Start the video again, and we'll tell you what we got here at the lab. Everybody ready? Let's go ahead and, uh, and work through this one. Let me move this. Okay. So what do we title this one? Big Splash. Big Splash. I like that. The Big Splash. Who or what's the focus? Dreamer. Subfocuses. The Whale. Boy. Details. Was there actually a splash? There was a threat of a splash. So let, let's put this. It was huge, right? And so, right. Hmm. So there was a, an interesting idea. Instead of saying T A I L, perhaps tail is T A L E. Interesting. The huge tail. 
So, anything else, any other details? Yeah, dead? And then alive. Okay. So the dreamer ran through a fence. So she sees she sees the boy dead. She runs through the fence and turns him back, sees him alive. Okay. Now that's enough to figure this out. Quick question. Good dream or bad dream? Good. Good. Right. Even though there's a sense of urgency, right? There's a sense of running. It's a very good dream. It has a good feel to the dream. What could the the whale talk about? What would the whale represent? So big impact. So whale would represent something that has big impact. The water is, is what's being impacted. What would the, the ocean represent? Could be spirit or it could be a lot of people, right? Because in Revelation, that the, the seas represented the sea of humanity, represented how many people that was going to be affected, right? Now, this is a spiritual issue because she originally sees it coming out of the sky, Right? So even though that was a perception, that was, that was a perception that was a part of the dream, and so it gets interpreted, right? So she sees it. So it's a spiritual thing. It's going to affect a lot of people, right? It's going to make a big splash. It's going to impact a lot of people. Now, what, what's she doing? Right, she's running, and so she sees somebody that's dead. So who's this boy? Does it matter? Just somebody. Right? It's just somebody. Could be a boy, right? Could be somebody that's immature, but it's just somebody that she says, that she sees that's dead. And she has to go through a fence. Play on words. A fence. She's going to have to go through a fence. And on the other side, he's going to be alive. She misses the resurrection because of a fence. So, you could put this together in a very positive way. Who's going to do it? Come on, we've got to get a couple tries. Chelsea... Come on, you got to help me out. Come on up. Yay, Chelsea. It's got to be God because I don't have anything. Um, okay, so I did get that it was a spiritual issue because it was coming from the sky, uh, that there was something. Um, see, you threw me off with the offense thing. Okay, then leave really it out. Good. Uh, there was something of um, of great influence that was coming, or something that was going to cause. Um, a lot, I, I don't know. It seemed like a lot of destruction. Um, I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> okay. So now, the plot of the dream. Yes. She sees something coming out of the sky mm-hmm. that's going to pick, cause a big splash. It's going to cause a big wave, a big impact. So it's actually in the like waters. a big wave of God. Big wave of God's. Okay. But she sees something coming out of the sky that's going to cause a lot of impact. And she starts running. And as she's running, she sees the dead come to life. So she's, is she running from the wave of God that's coming? Because that's, of the fence? Or? Well, that's the good question. It doesn't say why she's running other than she's scared. 
right? Yeah. Something big's coming. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is going to happen. I need to be safe. Okay. All right, so how would you say that to the dreamer? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so now do this. Do that. Here, here's one of the secrets. Because Now, this is going to really help you out. Once you figure out the basic plot of the dream, when you're giving the interpretation, one of the places to start, now, you're, you'll, you'll move past this, but one of the places to start is just to take the plot of the dream and take the meaning of the elements and replace the elements with the meaning of the elements. So, what? <laughs> do you understand what I mean? No. All right. So, the plot of the dream saw something big coming out of the sky. Right. I realized it was a whale and its tail was going to create a big splash. I started running, so it didn't affect me. I saw something, I saw a boy dead, and I turned around, after I went through a fence, I turned around and saw him alive. Now, get rid of details. I saw something big coming out of heaven that was going to affect a lot of people. I started running, so it didn't affect me, and it caused the dead to live again. Okay, <laughs> that's good. All right. How would you say it? I, I would say that, um, so if you're taking the stuff away. Yes. Now, here's the secret. L look at the dreamer real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, what I was seeing is just that a big wave of God is coming and you came, you, um, it was so strong that you ran from it. Um, but that you were going to go through, like, like you said, to go through the offense. Uh, but once you got past that, it was going to lead to you seeing the, the dead race. I don't, I don't know how to put that. I don't know how to word that. That worked. Okay. <laughs> that worked because that, that communi the, communicated the, the basic points. So that, that, was, that was a good basic interpretation of the dream. And so you start there. And one of the keys to help you get better is you start with that and then you, you write it out. And then you rewrite it, and you rewrite it, and you rewrite it. Because okay. rewriting it, that, that's where you start to hone how to communicate the details and, and kind of fit it together so it flows a little bit better. But when you start, it's going to be a little bit choppy. That's okay. That's okay. Right. That's where you start. Yes. You tried. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yay. So one of the things I love to do is to help people overcome their fears because if they step out, they grow more than what they realize they're growing from it. And so always take the opportunity to step beyond what you're comfortable with because that's the only way you'll grow. Okay? Anybody else want to give this one a shot? Somebody got maybe a different feel for it or a different way of saying it? Yeah. Okay, so how did I get that it was positive and not negative? Because the question, the T-A-I-L, was that T-A-L, was that a lie? And the, the key that I looked at in, in this particular dream is this boy coming to life. There's... There's in the dream... You, you have the dreamer looking back to see what's, what's the effect of this splash. Is anything happening? And when they look back, they see something that was dead that was coming to life. And so it's something that initially looks dark, that looks confusing, that looks scary, that's going to end up being much better than what the dreamer thought because it's going to bring the dead to life. And that, that's the whole reason. And so that's the feeling, that, that's kind of the, the, that, that sense of it's probably, it's probably a positive thing. Um, and the question that I'm kind of left with, because just looking at the dreamer, um, some of that doesn't seem to completely fit, because it seems like she wouldn't be running from the move, she would be running towards the move. Um, but you have, it doesn't look like what she would expect right? There's something intimidating. It's going to be so overwhelming that the initial sense, but the question that I had was, is this a message that the dreamer 
carries to the church. Is one of the things that happens with dreams is sometimes when you're the dreamer, that you, the dream is about you. It's something that you need to know. And sometimes when you're the dreamer, God is teaching you a principle. And as you learn that principle, you get a message. I, I get a lot of dreams. I had a number of my dreams, probably about 10% of my dreams that I could not figure out. I could not make sense because I'd be in these dreams and I'd look at the plot and the plot just would not fit anything that was going on in my life, anything that was happening. I'm like, what do I do with this dream? And when I just took me out of the dream and I just looked at it as a spiritual principle, it made amazing sense. And I've gotten some of, some of the, the messages that I get the most testimonies from when I share them are from principles and stuff that I learned in dreams. Because the Holy Spirit is a really good teacher and he doesn't stop teaching just because you go to sleep. But when you're involved in the dream, you get empathy for people that are going through the same thing. And so you can feel that just, she's not thinking positive. She's just thinking, oh no, this is big, not good, right? Which is exactly what people in their innocence, they don't realize that they're running from a move of God. They don't realize that they're running from something that God's unleashing, that something that's coming out of heaven. They just see the potential for danger. But if they can deal with the offense, they'll turn back and they'll see that dead things have come to life. And if they don't get caught up in the offense, they may actually get to be a part of the dead coming to life. Yes, question. I was thinking. Just because I, I want to make a comment on that. That's, okay. It's really good. She was saying that the huge thing, I'll, I'll touch on this and one more thing she said about the fence. A huge thing came out of heaven. It was black, she said, but the sky, I asked her what color, what, what would it look like? She said the sky was blue on both sides. So that made me think that this was something negative. And then the tail, just something like a lie, something that attack a lot of people in a negative way that will impact a lot of people. She ran, maybe it was because of fear. And the fact that she ran through the fence, like you said, on a fence, once she got through that, I asked her what, what type of fence was it? Just a question. I said, was it a white picket fence? What type of fence? She said it was a chain link fence. So maybe it was something that was meant to keep her in bondage. Once she gets through that, then she'll have the ability to call that what is dead back to life. The boy, I thought maybe could it be, like you said, I don't, that part was kind of hard. I don't know if it was a, a, a leadership ability because boys maybe speak of leadership mm. and, and, and lead, but you know, or maybe young, those young in Christ, I'm not sure. But my thing, was it, some, was it something a part of her or is it other people that she'll call back to life is my question. Well, and simply because she was in the dream, you would mm -hmm. assume it's not a part of her. Okay. Because when you're in the dream, usually the other elements in the dream are not, uh, other people specifically in the dream are not parts of you. Okay. That would be a, like a Jungian type of uh, an mm -hmm. interpretation okay. where you'd have different parts in the dream would be archetypes who represent right. pieces oh, of okay. the dreamer. Okay. Uh, okay. And so usually there, there, there's someone or something else. Okay. So um, my initial question was just, I guess, the huge black thing so, coming from God or coming from heaven, I was thinking that it was negative because he said both the sky was blue and then this black thing came down. Is it something coming negative from a heavenly perspective, like a demonic attack that's going to affect a lot of people, be a big lie or something that's not of truth? She'll get through the offense of it and call those back to life who were dead. Okay. That's my question. So. That's, that's great. See, yeah, that, that's really good. And, and, and here's, here's a great learning point, and I get to be a good example for you. Um, I have been focusing and, and, and looking at the things that God is releasing in the earth, and I see this move of God that's coming, and I heard this dream and applied it to what I knew. I did the very thing I tell other people not to do. And I might have missed this interpretation. Actually, I think I did because as Theo shares that interpretation, that feels a lot better than the one that I came up with. I think he's right. I think that black thing is a big tale. It's a big deception that's being released that's going to affect and that it is going to, to cause the church to have to deal with offense, cause the dreamer to deal with offense. But on the other side of it, that God is still going to bring dead things back to life. 
Now, I don't know that that dead thing, whatever the dead boy represents, we'll just leave that general because it doesn't seem clear. It could actually be the dead coming to life. That could be resurrection power. It could be talking about salvation. One of those issues is most likely what that's talking about. But good job. Thank you. Yay.